Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and today I'm in Milton, New Hampshire, home of Eastern Boats and Rossboro, USA, and today I am on the 246 Yarmouth from Rossboro. If there was ever a boat that screamed Great Loop, this is it. Come on aboard and check it out with me. Now, this is the Yarmouth version, which means that there's booth-style seating over to the starboard side and then a galley to the port hand side. There's a Halifax version that has the galley over on the starboard side, and then there's a bench seat with a table in front of it, a pedestal table. There's also a Digby version that has a head compartment right in this location, small galley with a sink and a single burner stove in front of that, and then down below is a refrigerator. Now let's go over some of the details. First of all, six foot, nine inch overhead clearance. Each of the two bench seats is 39 inches. We could drop this table down and make this area into a berth, and it doesn't look like it would be much going from here to here, but this cushion goes underneath the helm seat, making the whole berth six feet, two inches. Ventilation is the key word here. We've got opening window to the side, to the stern, an opening front window, two opening doors to both sides ahead. But if we don't want the ventilation, we can also have the air conditioning and heating going on. Now there's 23 inches of walkthrough space between everything over on the starboard side and then this galley. There's a single burner electric stove, refrigeration, stainless steel sink, and then storage underneath. This compartment also has the hot water heater. Plus we've got open counter space. I like that there are teak fiddles to hold everything in place while we're underway. We have three LED lights to both sides, and then in the center there are two of these lights that can turn on with either red or white. And it's dimmable. Just turn and hold it. Now just looking around this interior, we can see that there's a utilitarian atmosphere to it. We're not talking upholstered bulkheads and ultra leather material. It's just simple easy to maintain but with that said to me this wood trim and just the right touch of accents it just gives it a warm homey feel in this boat now there's also a large level of customization that the builder will accommodate on this boat for example you take a look at this seat right here it's on a slider so it slides fore and aft i would actually have it on a swivel as well one thing that the builder would be happy to do there are two 100 watt solar panels on the roof that feed into the batteries to keep them charged i would also put lithium batteries on here maybe and an inverter so i can run everything while we're away from the dock and away from shore power and they'll be happy to do that your solar panel converter is right underneath the cooktop along with connectivity battery switches and the main breaker panel all of this in one easily accessible location now let's take a look down below Headroom here is five feet, seven inches, and we have two V berths, six foot, two inches long each. Over to the starboard side, there's a head, and this one has actually a composting head as an option. There's storage to the sides, a storage locker just behind, natural light coming in from two side windows and an overhead hatch, and fully forward, we have the road locker. There's a battery switch for the optional bow thruster, and we can also put a filler cushion in here. And all this can be closed off with a sliding privacy door. Now taking a look at the aft deck, spacious enough, seven feet, 10 inches side to side, four feet, two inches to head of this bench seat, six feet, seven inches of overhead clearance. The bulwarks come up 24 inches. We can also get rails to go across the top. There are storage boxes to both sides that also make excellent boarding and disembarking positions with a grab handle up on top of the overhead. And again, notice the utilitarian look with just the right amount of teak trim going all the way around. Just to the port hand side, there's a hot and cold shower plus a 30 amp shore power connection. We can also access storage by bringing this seat back forward. And this also gives us access to the fuel filter. I suppose that Rossboro could close this off and make it look a little prettier, but that would do nothing but add cost to the boat. And that's not necessary. And this storage compartment goes all the way under this aft deck to a full 35 inches. Now, one other thing that can go on in this area is that 
Rossbro USA will add a generator to this space. And that being done because of the extra weight, what they recommend, and it's a good idea, is to add the power hull extension that goes all the way out, pretty much the same footprint as this swim platform, and it also adds some buoyancy to the boat. Now it's easy to see that this boat has the extended hardtop. That's an option on this boat. When we have this hardtop, we can get a five or seven panel enclosure to make it a three season boat, or we can leave the whole thing open. We make our way to the bow through the seven and a half inch side decks. Grab rail across the top makes for a safe transition. And then once fully forward, there's a post right at the bow, just behind the optional windlass. Foot control switches are to the right hand side. Rail height at the working end of the bow, 22 inches. I'm also happy to see that there's a freshwater washdown for the anchor. Take a look at this four inch rub rail, great for a boat with the utility that this one has. I also noticed the spray rails on the bow, how they come way back. That'll give us a nice dry ride. Now let's take a look at the helm. It's a simple console in keeping with the utilitarian feel of this entire boat. There's an optional bow thruster, We've got trim tabs, windlass control, fuel gauge, an RPM gauge, and then the engine control. Key over on the right hand side, the stainless steel wheel is mounted to a fixed base and we have our 12 volt electrical switches over to the port hand side just below the two windshield wiper controls. Of course, as you can imagine, my favorite feature, the opening side window providing great ventilation plus easy access to a dock line. For that reason, I'd like to see a cleat put right here. Tilt the whole thing back, makes for easy servicing. Up above, there's a digital compass. That's an upgrade from the magnetic compass that is usually mounted here. And I would like to see it mounted right in the center, but that is a request by the owner. Just above, 12 inch Garmin display, and then a Garmin VHF is just alongside that. Now missing from this equation, beverage holders, but there's plenty of room to both sides of the helm seat. And I'm sure Ross Bro USA would be more than happy to accommodate that. There's a footrest forward and then a storage box to the side. This is also repeated to the opposite side and it makes a nice step for when you're coming in or going out through these side doors. I think one other thing I would add would be a flip down footrest to this side just so I have a place to put my feet other than fully forward. Engine choices are 150 horsepower on up to 250 horsepower from Honda, Yamaha, Mercury, Suzuki. This one's attached to the swim platform. There's a mount for a kicker motor right alongside. A popular option would be adding a swim reboarding ladder. The Rospo RF246 has a length overall of 25 feet, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a draft of 18 inches. With an empty weight of 7,500 pounds, 25% fuel, and three people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 8,240 pounds. With the single 200 horsepower Yamaha outboard turning a 15 and a quarter by 17 pitch prop and run up to 5,500 RPM, our speed topped out at 31.8 miles per hour. Best cruise came in at 3,000 RPM at 14.4 miles per hour. At that speed, the 5.7 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 2.5 miles per gallon and a range of 264 statute miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 115 gallon total fuel capacity. An acceleration test she reached planing speed in 3.7 seconds and cruised through 20 miles per hour in 6.8. The 246 is a comfortable cruising boat. She'll do 30 miles an hour, but when you're at that speed, the question becomes why? That's not really the kind of boat this is. She's made for going slow and going for good distance. Her best cruising speed is about 14 miles an hour, and that's where we'll get the best economy as well. And she seems to handle the best at that speed. She's comfortable. She makes gentle, docile turns. She's settled into the water to the point where she's got buoyancy all around and when you come up on a wake at that speed, you're not getting thrown and all over the place um, like you would be if you were up on plane and hitting that wake and you've got less flotation. It's definitely a cruising couple's boat and I could see a couple really enjoying this and just taking off and having a good time with it. Rossbowers have almost, I'd have to say, a cult-like following, and I can see why after making my way through this 246. It's an ideal cruising couple's boat for those empty nesters, the kids are gone, and you want to just get out of the way and get onto the horizon. This is the boat to do it in, and that's my full features inspection and performance evaluation of the 246 Yarmouth from Rossbow USA. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.